Hello. Today I'm just going to see if I can swap over um, the sound uh, mainboard from the Proteus 2500 to the uh, MP7 command station. And this is because this unit I've had for a few years now and the effects don't work. Uh, this I got recently uh, without a sound ROM uh, from a gentleman um, who very kindly sent it over um, and as far as I've been told these two boards are the same it's just the actual uh, lack of pads etc on this one so all this top strip and this top strip are the same and it should just work so that's what we're going to try and find out so what I'll do is I'll uh, save it the taking apart of stuff, take the board out of here and compare it to this one. Hello. So first thing I'm going to do, now we've got the units separate, is take all these screws out. Which I've done everywhere else apart from here. Then I'll take the cover off. Okay, so the cover. Now off. This watch it has a uh, a lip on both sides. So you have to be careful when you lift it off. There's the inside. Yeah. So um, here we are. Uh, just going to uh, start looking at taking the board out. Uh, and I already noticed that whoever's had this previously. Um, has done something here they've put a lot of glue on there I don't think that's standard from the factory um, so th there's glue all the way down the side including onto the wires so I'm not sure if that's it's certainly not easy to just come out it won't just pop out so I'm gonna have to spend some time doing that uh, after that then it's fairly simple in terms of connections there's just one down here one here and of course after unscrewing that board, then just got to undo those nuts, uh, which I can do. Uh, I've been putting this job off for a while. Um, maybe I should do those first. Because, apart from the time it takes to set up doing a video, in fact, you probably wouldn't believe the, the way I've got this set up on the... Uh, Maybe I'll take a picture of it. I've got the camera hanging by a piece of wire from a frame on the place where I've got the computer. <laughs> um, and it's wobbling about and stuff. One of the other challenges is, is trying to get things so that videos are at least reasonably able to be watched. Uh, because I'm not a professional videographer I'm not a repair technician, I'm just a person who struggles with trying to fix stuff that's broken to try and use it so I can afford to do the music stuff and I'm not very uh, good at teaching, tutoring, whatever, um, that's not my gift of, uh, and it's not a skill I've developed so I tend to wander around uh, so in making videos, this one or any other, um, my lack of ability to make things nice and polished and perfect often limits or stops me from producing um, any sort of YouTube videos content, even if I've got an exciting idea. Sometimes I'll start and then it'll take me so long to try and get everything sorted, the right lighting and the camera uh, and by the time I've set it all up I've just lost the inspiration to do anything um, I'm not interested any longer in doing the thing that I even set out to because it's taken so long to set up and I don't have the space to set up a studio this is just set up in the hall of my house which is where my computer is because I don't have another room to put it in so don't have the space and sometimes it drives me nuts <laughs> um, yeah 
very nuts indeed um, but that's okay um, in fact, let's <laughs> I, I do know that I've got at least one screw loose um, so uh, see this video already is uh, too long for people uh, to watch I know that uh, I'm going to try and do bits of cuts in the editing program if I can. Uh, may or may not keep this bit in. Anyway, that's that's out. Uh, and I think what I'll do now to save you from listening to my diatribe uh, is I'll take this lot off, sort out that connector that's all glued on, see if I can get that off. Uh, get the board loose, ready to take out, and then start the video again there. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, yeah. just in case it helps, uh, I'm not sure if this glue is put on at the factory or if it's just someone else who's done it. So if it is factory-wise, because I've only ever seen one of these units, this one, um, then the way I got the glue to start coming off is just by, with the screwdriver, down that gap there, gently twisting open and then the glue started to come off the nylon and then you can twist that off slowly so if you work along carefully all the way to the end that should be fine um, okay so it's still quite stiff so what I've had to do is gently pry up one end and work, work along just gently twisting with the screwdriver very carefully and trying to show that yeah, along with at the front, um, again pushing past this glue, twisting that out to break the adhesion. See now it's pulled completely off, so now in theory this connector should gently rock in it, just come off. Hooray, so that's it done. So here's the command station. Um, Missing its buttons and an interesting grey knob. Uh, on this mine, if I turn it over, I'll have to do the same uh, trick as I did with the P2500, which is uh, take all these nuts off. Um, that'll help me to be really nuts. And um, we'll see if this is just a straight swap. Uh, I've been told it is, and I'm assuming it is, but I've not actually ever done this, so I don't actually know. These two bits of metal here sticking out are from a uh, power supply that I uh, bought after following some uh, posts on the EMU command station group on Facebook uh, someone had done a swap with a power supply recommended a type and a model which I can't remember if I can get it I'll put it in the description uh, as long as I remember um, and that allowed this to work again the fan noise is a bit irritating I suppose I could switch it off but so far I haven't uh, the other um, issue with it is there's no switch on and off uh, for the power supply um, very rough and ready um, but it works and it enabled me to use the command station after my power supply uh, stopped working um, just get these last two screws out uh, and then we'll open this up and I'll show you what it looks like inside there we go uh, yeah, so this power supply also had to cut out uh, part of the case. Uh, those two screws are holding the fan and the power supply to the command station. It's very rough, very rough. Uh, but it works. Uh, I'll just take these out. Uh, pause the video so that you don't have to listen to me rambling again. Okay, those screws are now out. Uh, just another thing. Um, on mine... 
You've probably never seen a command station like this. I've got some extra cooling slots here. Uh, and that's because the power supply I put in with the wires, it won't close down effectively. So I've put like little posts and I couldn't find nuts for those. Uh, so instead I used some sticky tape, which holds it like screws do. See, if it, if it works, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, I'm not very good at um, making things look nice. Uh, I'm just happy to get it working again, um, especially with the recent prices increasing for command stations. I just can't afford to get another one. Now, this then should be loose. Just need to help these to release. Which way around does it go? It goes that way. There we are. So the two things that connect uh, the bottom section of the case to the top are that connector and this one. Uh, plus I put um, an earthing wire so that uh, because I haven't got screws holding the bottom down I'd be able to earth the case. So this is the uh, top case of the command station and here where you can't see it is the other board I'll cover up my terrible power supply so I'll be comparing the boards quickly before I swap them over but as far as I'm aware they are the same board um, Let's have a look down here actually. Let me just do that and get hold of the camera because the camera is you know, held really professionally on a piece of wire hanging down above my desk. Um, so we've got um, 1022 Rev A, Rev A, AP1022, 0, and that's 0, 01, C, C. So you can see as we look along the bottom edge of the board at least. We've got very similar components. Oh, and I don't need this. Now, this is something else I learnt uh, very recently, like aka okay, yesterday. Uh, I thought that you had to have the different ROMs in a particular order to save the audio presets working. Uh, and it wouldn't work if you swapped the ROMs around in order. However, that's not true. Uh, appreciate um, being uh, highlighted this to me uh, by John on the uh, on the group because um, I stated this and he challenged and said he didn't think it was quite right and he was absolutely correct and I'd been wrong uh, I think what I'd done is I'd made a sound using two or three ROMs you know a preset sound and taken one of the ROMs out to put into my Proteus 2000 and the sound no longer works and I got an error with not installed um, so I appreciate um, that, that John pulled me up on that and said no hang on that's not quite right that any ROMs in any slots as long as you have all the ROMs in the slots that made the preset sound then it'll work so that's another thing okay so that's all disconnected uh, just got to take this off which is the power supply connection which again is gentle wiggling and I'm using my screwdriver just to lift up a bit and go down the back here and just gently prising it up so I'm not putting too much pressure on and once it gets past that clip it should, there we go, it's just pulled off which is great that's the old one here's the new one Well. Second hand but new, if you know what I mean. So that goes in well, it fits, doesn't it? Oh, that's the, um, you can see that, that's like a double post that I used. I'm looking for some nuts that are the right size for those so that I can put proper screw on nuts to hold it in, not found them yet. Right, I'll screw all this back in and then we'll get it back together. Okay, so that's all disconnected. Uh, just okay, time for some more shaky camera work.
but I thought I'd bring you down close uh, just to show you putting these um, chips in so they go in at uh, the angle like that and you'll notice on one end if I just hold the camera at the right place is that cut out there there's a notch at one end and not at the other um, and I found that uh, with this board set up here the notch is there at the top end so the notch is up here and it literally just clicks in so there's a clip at this end and a clip at this end see that there we go um, and then getting it out is the same you just have to pull the clip at both ends I sometimes use a piece of plastic to do that so I'll put these in this is the uh, techno ROM from hacks or hacks that I got recently which is the Rob Pappen one uh, I've got an X ROM and last one is the composer on uh, this is uh, again a very good um, ROM um, lots of excellent samples so now that that's on I'm going to put this back together and I'll uh, boot it up and see, we'll see if it works okay so that's all the, the ROMs Okay, that's the uh, the last of those screws in. Apart from the one I can't find, I'll find in a second. There it is. Just making sure all these are tight. Provide a good ground connection. And then we've got all these nuts to go back on. And the screws to go in there. Um, might as well talk whilst I'm doing this you know I skip forward I think I'll put it in chapters so that you can skip past my ramblings uh, if you've ever heard of a guy called Mauricio Balma um, he's the guy who first inspired me to get a command station uh, just by reading what he'd written were the capabilities of this unit uh, on the as was gear slots now is the uh, gear something forum uh, again I'll put the link in the description if I remember um, he described the possibilities the capabilities of this unit um, in a way that really spoke to my um, desire to be able to create sounds um, that's sort of what pushes me on and motivates me to continue to explore the command station um, and by that I mean the creating of sounds um, I don't actually make what you would call traditional music actually very often um, but I do explore sound possibilities and this command station is quite an amazing tool for that with four layers uh, per preset and each of those layers having a different um, wave or sample selected and obviously you don't have to use all four um, but you, you can mix up a drum kit with strings with a lead all at the same time you can apply those to a keyboard map 
to allow for lower notes to be the drum kit, middle notes to be strings, and the higher notes to be a lead. Or you can layer them all so they play one or more of each. So you can play up to four layers in different configurations. And then you can link that preset with four layers to two, up to two other presets to play at the same time. So basically you've got 12 layers then you can play with at the same time. And because the controllers on the front of the unit are MIDI controllers, you can use these and they can affect different layers at the same time. So now I've just got to find a power lead. Okay, so I've found my uh, power lead. Long to truth. Get that ready to plug in. Negotiate on the wires. Plug in. We have lights. It's loading. How exciting. Um, I suppose I better put some audio in just in case. We're going to check it works. There it is booting up. So now it says Emu Proteus. Because it's from a Proteus that's uh, linked to the board. But that seems to be working okay. Let's put in uh, main right and left. Let's see if we can get any sound out of it. Use the wire for the camera, perhaps, just to. <laughs> Yeah, the camera's gone twisted. It's on a piece of um, wire hanging over the top of my desk, which is why um, it wibbles round. Um, could do it being like that so you can see the wife's name. Turn up the volume on the mixer. I use a Roland GoPro mixer, Go Mixer Pro. Um, Anyway, I'll show you that another time. Uh, preset. Uh, oh, it's making a noise. I think so. Yep, that does. Let's go to Prom 1 Harp Guitar. Yep. If you got this far, thank you very much for watching, um, and I will do some more exploring. Um, especially, you can see this to the right. Um, this setup I've got currently, I'm trying. It's just a webcam, uh, which is not as good as 
the iPad for quality video wise but it allows me through OBS Studio to use that thing to look at uh, various frequency responses and what the sound looks like when you alter it with the filters so that's probably something we're going we I am going to do um, in, in in the future.